Oh no. Stranger Things is one of my personal favorite shows of all time, but season four was just different. It was an insanely great season, even though technically, as of filming the video, it's not over. Volume two has still yet to come out. As I'm posting this video, I literally think volume two has just come out. But seriously, as what I've seen so far, season four has been incredible, and it is a lot different from all the previous seasons. I recommend you all go check it out. But if you're watching this video, you've probably already seen it. So let's just get in right to the tutorial. So we are going to be doing the effect, the floating effect, that we see in the uh, season multiple times. More prominently, though, in the uh, scene where Max is running away from Vecna, and she's floating above Billy's gravestone. That scene's everywhere now, and especially that Running Up the Hill song, you've probably heard that like 30,000 times in the past month because that song is about the most overplayed thing on the internet right now. But still, I think it's time to go get right into the tutorial. So, here we go. All you're gonna need for this effect is two shots. One of you or your actor doing whatever pose you're gonna do while you're floating and a shot either of a clean plate that's on a still tripod or a moving shot. I am going to show you uh, how to do both in the editing process, but you can choose either one for now. And then once you have your shots, we can hop right in After Effects. So I know in the intro I said I was gonna show you all how to do this effect with or without camera movement, but what I'm gonna do instead is do it just with camera movement. But here's the thing. If you're doing without camera movement, it is the exact same editing process minus tracking. So basically, the very first thing I'm going to do when editing this, you just skip that part if you have no camera movement, and then just pick up right back after. So it's actually much it's easier, but it's basically the same thing. So what you're going to do first is go new comp from footage and get your a shot without your actor in it. All right, now that you have your shot, what I'm going to advise you to do is rename because it's always a good habit. I say this like every single tutorial that I've ever done. Always rename your layers because in later, like, you know, you may not be doing big effects now, but whenever you are and you have like 20 layers, you're going to want to know which one you're editing because you may accidentally edit the wrong one. It's just a whole mess if you if it's unorderly. So make sure you always rename. Anyway, once you do this, if you're doing a with camera movement, you're gonna do this next step. If you not, then what you're gonna do is just skip this part and then pick up right after. So if you are doing with camera movement, you go to track motion under the tracker, track motion. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna you see this tracker here. What you're gonna do is you're gonna move it to an area that you would like to track. It's an area that's gonna be seen in the entire shot. So this part of the tree that's pretty high contrast, this white area of the tree, uh, something that's high contrast by some dark area may work out pretty well. So once you have it on that track point, you're gonna press analyze forward and it's gonna analyze your shot, which is pretty much going to track its motion. Now once your tracking is done, you're gonna go up here to layer, new, and null object. You're gonna press edit target, make sure this says null one, press okay, apply, make sure it's on X and Y, and press okay. Now that track is on this null, it's connected. Now what you're gonna do is go back up to file, import, and file, and go find your actor footage. So now that you have your shot in your footage, make sure you rename it. And remember, whether you have or you don't have camera movement in your footage, you're gonna have to do this. Everything else, pretty much, in the rest of the video, whether you have with or without camera shake, you're gonna do this. So now, you're gonna double click your actor footage and go up to the here to the rotoscope tool, and you're gonna make a rotoscope around you or your actor. Also make sure you go quality and go best. And you're gonna get a good rotoscope around you or your actor. So once you start rotoscoping around you or your actor's hair, that is always kind of a difficult thing to do because my hair kind of sticks out and stuff and it's not as solid uh, as the rest of your, you because it's it's a lot more, it's like the uh, texture is a lot more different. So what we're gonna do is go to the rotoscope tool, option W, and now we have the refine edge tool and draw around your actor's hair. And then it, this, this, 
outfits. This is, like, listen. As someone who has to mask a lot, this is just perfect. Because you cannot perfectly mask hair like this. This is insane. So once you have that, I just kind of freaked out over this because it, it, I just love the rotoscope tool a little too much, honestly. So he, uh, once you have a pretty good, uh, pretty, pretty solid rotoscope, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to press play so it can analyze. And it may, may take a second to analyze because... It has to go through your entire shot and remember like I said it's not frame by frame like you don't have to go in and mess with anything if it's a really good roto now if sometimes if you do a, do a lot of movement or it kind of notices something else and kind of cuts that in or cuts some of you out you do have to go in but generally when it comes to rotoscoping you don't have to do any more uh, other than the very first frame that you're editing. As you can see, it is analyzing, moving frame by frame. I don't have to do anything. All I had to do was set the original mask roto around myself, and it's just going to go through the entire clip, rotoscoping it out, frame by frame. I don't have to do anything. And then just, you're just going to wait until it's done. Okay, my rotoscope has finished analyzing. Let me go into the shot. As you can see, it's actually a, it's a pretty good roto. So, uh, I'm trying to look, make sure there's any, if there's anything you want to fix. For me, I do, I think I'm going to go into it again real quick and mess with some stuff over here. You can reduce, uh, reduce chatter or you can do some other stuff over here, smooth out, feather a little bit. So now that your rotoscope is done, you're going to go to freeze and press that. This is basically just going to freeze your rotoscope and you're gonna wait while this analyzes. It may take a second, depending on how long your shot is, and just, and just wait till it's done, and then we can go right back into it. So once your footage is done freezing, you're gonna position them where you would like them in the shot, or you can scale them a little bit too if you'd like. For me, I'm gonna put it like, right here on almost center frame now obviously in a moving shot he kind of just there goes with the shot which i'm gonna have to fix so if you have a moving shot what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab this little pick whip here you're gonna drag it to the null footage or null tracker so now that is connected so with the movement he's kind of stay still he stays still but what we're gonna do now is i'm actually gonna I want mine to be a little short. It's mine's, my footage is going to be shorter. So I'm going to trim it down a little bit. But So now it goes up like this. But also what I want is I want to kind of control how he goes up. So I'm going to grab the actor footage again. I'm going to go down to transform and position. And I'm going to position him to kind of go up more. So if I replay it. There you go. Now also, that is obviously what I just did there is all tracking and stuff, which obviously if you have no camera motion, you don't have to do that. All you have to do, but if you have no camera motion, you of course have to do some keyframing with the positioning since there's no movement. Anyway, all that is it. Thank you all so much for watching today's video. I really do appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell so you know anytime I post a brand new video. Also, go check the link in the description go to our discord thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one here is our final product now if you would like to add some camera shake to your effect go check out our tutorial on how to do camera shake and after effects now thanks for watching today's video and we'll see you in the next one goodbye